dry January, sober October. From those who abstain altogether to those who call themselves sober curious, many Americans seem to be cutting back on alcohol intake. While beer, wine, and liquor remain a huge part of the social standard in the United States, according to a recent Gallup poll, more than one-third of American adults don't drink alcohol. So why does it feel as if for so long the default has always been to drink? You can really feel like an outcast if you're not participating. Well, I stopped drinking 10 years ago. That was not the easiest choice. Like on Wall Street, people drink a ton. Could I have continued down the path of just the social norm of drinking at you know every work event and you know every social event, sure, probably, um, but I didn't realize the ways that was impacting my life, my physical health, my mental health, until after I stopped, honestly. For decades, messages encouraging consumption have been poured into public consciousness through advertising, legislative lobbying, and even at the doctor's office. For a long time, there was this thinking that small amounts of alcohol might be beneficial and have, might have a positive health effect. I think we're increasingly moving away from that. Dr. Scott Hadland is an addiction specialist at Mass General for Children, who says many epidemiologists and addiction specialists have updated their views. What we're now thinking is that it is probably best to have no alcohol whatsoever, that any amount of alcohol that you have does contribute to some level of health harm. It appears the public is becoming increasingly aware of this risk and exploring ways to imbibe less by practicing more mindful drinking or cutting out alcohol completely. Most people who have a glass of wine here or there or a beer here or there and are drinking at low levels are not going to have any health effects from it. Where we start to worry is when somebody's use starts to go into that territory of causing problems. Alcohol is a drug. If we think about it as a substance that has a psychoactive effect on people if they drink it or if they use it, then absolutely it's a drug. And we also know that it can lead to addiction in people. 23 million Americans suffer from what's now classified as substance use disorder. We used to say things like somebody is an addict or somebody is an alcoholic, and what we know is that the, these labels can be really damaging for people. That deliberate reframing is one of the many efforts the medical community is making to help destigmatize addiction. Instead, we want to label them just like we do with every other medical issue as being a person first who has a medical issue that can be helped. Substance use disorder is now diagnosed as mild, moderate, or severe. Our job is always to meet patients wherever they are in the spectrum, and then help them to make positive change. My first book. But making that change can feel like swimming upstream for a long list of reasons. Laura McCowan is a Marblehead author who's writing her third book on her recovery journey. For so long, we've been culturally duped about that, thinking that alcohol was part of a healthy lifestyle because of the campaigns that Big Alcohol bought. In 2023, beer, wine, and liquor companies spent $28 million to influence federal legislation and policy. When I got sober, and I would say even five years ago, you'd have to have an excuse and think about it beforehand before you went out to dinner and you were not going to drink. For McCowan and many others, the choice to abstain from alcohol in a social setting can be like wearing a scarlet letter out to dinner, even among family and friends. Am I on antibiotics? Am I going to lie and say that I'm training for, you know, a, a 5K? Like, what excuse do I need to come up with so that people don't grill me about why I'm not drinking? However, there are changes taking place that are bringing balance to the beverage space. We had the couple of non-alcoholic beers that existed in the 90s. We had the early days of rather poor non-alcoholic wine and things like that. This is Tilden. This Pat is the Dooling is the founder of Dre Drinks, a non-alcoholic beverage store in Boston South End. So what's really nice is the product side has gotten to the point where you've got the choice. At some point, we've kind of crossed over the threshold and it's become a bigger part of the norm. In the past decade, alcohol ads have been banned from city property in Los Angeles, Philadelphia, and New York City. If culture keeps going this way, it won't be the foregone conclusion. It could be, um, you might drink, you might not, but it's not that big of a deal because there's plenty of people doing both. I think one of the most remarkable things that I've seen in, in over a decade of practice at this point is that rates of alcohol use have dropped down to historic low levels. This is actually an enormous public health success that we don't talk a lot about. 
And if you think you may suffer a substance use disorder or you just want to explore your relationship with alcohol and other drugs, there are a host of resources on our website. And if that's the case, Dr. Hadlin strongly recommends that you reach out to your primary care doctor to talk about your substance use. They can help you get the help that you need. Coming up, stepping out of the shadows.